In this video I will give you a thorough, deep review of Rider Duet. Hi everybody, this is Bela from the Riders Territory and in this video I want to give you an expansive review of Rider Duet. So this is going to be quite a long video, not a standard 15 or 20 minutes overview review of the app, but rather I will go through many of the features so you can get a good look at the software and after having seen this video you will have a good understanding of what it can and cannot do. Of course I cannot go through every detail but I will show you almost everything so that you can make an informed decision about if you want to try it out, use it or maybe buy it. Since this is an extensive review I will divide it into sections. I figured you probably won't watch the whole video, so if you're just interested in a part of it, you can jump right to the section that seems relevant to you. Before we start, let me say something about how I approach this review. Rider Duet is a fairly new software to me. I haven't used it regularly before, so in order to do this review, I jumped right into it without reading many instructions. The reason being, I wanted to see how intuitive it is to use and so that I could talk to you about my experience with that. Then, after having found out most of it, I believe, I checked the help for some topics so I would be able to talk to you about them comfortably. The version number I am reviewing is 6.0.373, so if something in your version of the software is different, go to check if you're maybe using another version. You can find the version number in your profile. One last thing. For the most part I will review the browser version of Rider Duet, but we will take a brief look at the downloaded app version also later on. Alright, let's jump in. The sections of this review are first impression, importing and exporting, writing and formatting, production features, outlining, collaboration, notes and annotations, backups, the differences between free and pro version, mobile experience, writing offline, customizations, general other stuff, and conclusion. Okay, first impression. Uh, you go to writerduet.com, that's the domain name, and then you should see something similar like this, in case you want to follow along. I am already logged in, okay? So if I click log in now, it will take me directly into the app, so to speak, although it's happening all in the browser. Um, if you're not logged in, of course, you have to uh, type in your username and password. And also, this brings me now directly to the script page, into the project. You can set it up that you see your a list of project first, and then you choose your project and we're gonna take a look at that. I just wanted to show the a brief overview of the interface first. Okay, so that's what it looks if you go into a project. And the first time I opened it, I just clicked around to see what is understandable, what is intuitive, um, what kind of tools there are, and I just played around a little bit. Okay, so I just want to give you a little bit of that experience. Um, at the left you see a bunch of icons, a bunch of tools. Let's just go through them, what they are, real quick. Um, if you click on the hamburger menu right here, you get a list of all the, well, the menu basically, okay? Because since we're in the browser, we cannot use the menu up top, the menu of the app. Uh, so they had to find a way to implement the menu inside of the browser and I think they did a pretty good job. Okay, so if you go into a menu, you can go into submenus and you see in which menu you are and you just click your way back out of it. Okay, so that's the way it works. And so everything that you would normally look for in the menu up top, you can find it here. And we will have a look at that in more detail later on. Now next up, that's Open Portfolio and New Project. This tripped me up a little bit the first time because of the terminology. Because I thought, okay, you can have projects 
Obviously, we're in a project, in some kind of project right now, but in fact, what we see here is a document. So there are documents, there are projects, and there are portfolios, and I didn't know the, what the difference was until I realized if you click Open Portfolio, it's not that you have several portfolios in Writer Duet. The window you see right now, that is called Portfolio. You see right up top here, it says My Portfolio. And this, if you open that portfolio, you see all of your projects. And inside of your project, now we're in the project deep review right here. And um, inside of the projects, we can have several documents. We're going to take a look at that later. And just uh, for a brief preview, you see them here on the right side. Okay, I'm just going to click that away. Um, so this tripped me up at first, but now it's totally clear. You have uh, open portfolio if you want to change the project or you can uh, create a new project. And next up, you have project information. And here you also see the documents that you have in the project. Okay, so a project can hold several documents. Seems cool. Time machine seems to seems having to do something with uh, history, uh, what happened in the project. And then you have save project, save as, export as. Okay, I I wouldn't have expected that under Time Machine. I would have expected that under this folder icon, but okay. Um, next up, we have cards and a private pad. Okay, index cards seems nice. Um, they seem to be divided by scenes and a private pad seems to be some kind of notepad, okay? Collaborators, I knew beforehand that Writer Duet is famous for its collaboration tool. So it's great to work together with other writers on one project. We're going to have a look at that, how that works later on. So, okay, that seems to be the place where you can set it all up. Comments, okay, comments and chat. Then this... Um, Keyboard symbol, you have the line types for your script. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Also, I was wondering about the note, outline, and act line types, what, what they will be doing. Uh, we're going to take a look at that as well. And then down below, you have tools, export, import. Okay, a little bit of formatting, some more tools, dual dialog, full screen, spell check. Okay, so then next up. Writing goals, nice history, okay. Writing schedule, obviously you can have a writing schedule in here. Help opens up this access to the knowledge base. Okay, and then down below we have layouts, obviously. Since it is a gear icon, I would have expected settings, but okay, it's layouts. Um, and let's see what that does. Okay, so you can change the elements on the screen, all right. Classic, focus, okay, that seems nice. I'm going to use a simplified layout that seems to work for me. Okay, so this was what I did first. I just went through the software and uh, clicked on everything a little bit. Now also in the script, what I like, this I just put in uh, some simple lines here that make no sense just to try out a few things and show you a few things okay so if you make a new project you will it will be totally empty don't worry um okay so here we have a comment icon okay obviously we can leave comments here revision history and some kind of tagging okay okay and also we can open or close on a scene by scene basis. Okay, seems nice. And then what do we have here? We have page. Okay, so we have different view modes here. Obviously we can use page mode, card mode. Might have to do something with the index cards we, we've seen before. That's my guess. And now we've, we're in a new tab. Okay, takes a bit to load, obviously. Or maybe it's my old computer, I don't know. Um, so here we have a tab view, so we can open several documents at once. Seems to make sense. Let's just give it a little bit of time. Yes, so okay, so now we have 
it appears as if we have the scenes now on different cards and if we try out the third view the mind map view let's see what happens okay this opens a mind map view to be honest i've already played a lot around with this a little bit so that's why you see all the cards out of order okay i just i'm just trying to simulate the experience i had when i tried it out the first time okay so first impression uh, some thoughts about this. The hamburger menu, I think that's um, that's a great way to implement the whole menu in a browser. What happened to me when I used it the first time, for example, let's go into file and then another sub project, for example, duplicate document. So um, if you do something else, now if you click away the menu and then go back into the menu, you're still in the sub menu. So you have to get to go out again before you can choose any other menu. So that tripped me up a little bit because it's not the same experience that you have with the application menu normally, because obviously it doesn't stay open or in some kind of sub menu because it can't, because it would um, cover parts of your screen, of course. So um, that's a little weird, um, but it's not a biggie. Other than that, I think going into those sub menus the way they did it without covering large parts of the screen, I think that uh, works pretty well. Also, as I already told you, the terminology tripped me up a little bit. Portfolio project. Okay, now so that's cleared up. Portfolio is the window where you can see your projects. And the project is basically your script, but it can hold other documents as well. Um, also, that the save and save as is under Time Machine, it's a little... I, I wouldn't have looked for it there, but then again, I mean, it's a cloud-based application, so you probably don't need it a lot, because it's going to save anyway all the time, and so maybe you just don't have to worry about it, so maybe that's why they put it somewhere where it's not in the way. That might be the reason. Then also that they placed the tools mixed up with some formatting in the same category as the line types. That seems a little off because it has a keyboard icon and I understand that they put the line types here and this seems like a little bit of a mix of just things that they needed to put somewhere. I mean, it's not a pro it's not a biggie. It's not a problem if you know that it's there. But I found it a little bit confusing at the beginning. And one other thing that confused me was, um, you see these little. It's supposed to be a down arrow, okay? This little uh, symbol because it's it has three lines that point downwards, and it took me a little to understand that this is actually an arrow because i saw it as a filter icon because coming you know from other applications like like excel um some applications use this icon or very similar icons uh for filter functions so i always thought there is something that i can filter i can filter the view somehow and it took me a bit to understand that this is just a, an arrow that points downwards and that can show or hide several options. And if you hover over it with your mouse, it, that's exactly what it shows you. It shows you toggle widget options. Okay, so that's that's not a filter, that's an arrow. For example, in, um, in documents, it says here docs and the name of the project and you have the arrow here. And I thought this was to filter documents. If you have several documents, it would make some kind of sense to me but it shows you more functions okay it's just to hide this section what i really like about the interface is that they manage to get a lot of functionality into a browser window and it works very well without a lot of loading time and also that you have um the possibility to open several documents in tabs that's really great so i think overall they did a great job i like the 
the dark view of it all. It's very, it's very non-distracting. It keeps in the background in some ways, so it's very, it's very pleasing to look at. It doesn't scream at you at all, so that's very nice. That's well done. I also like this that you can show and hide scene content in your script. That's very nice. That gives you a very, very clean view if you want that. And also that you have direct access to the comments here with the speech bubble. I think that's a very cute, a very nice, a very direct way for commenting um, without having to look for the notes function or some kind of menu or whatever. Okay, one more thing that it's that is equally cool and confusing that you have several ways to look at a page or a document. You have the cards view as well and you have the mind map view and just trying it out for the first time I didn't understand what the difference was because when you open up the mind map view for the first time it looks fairly similar to the card view and I just didn't really understand it. But we will go into that, no problem. It was just, as I said, I didn't read the instructions, so it's not a problem of the app. I just wanted to give you the experience what it was like for me to just get a little bit of a sense of um, what, what the software does as a first impression. Okay, so let's keep it at that. That was my first impression. Now let's dive in deeper and see what the software really does in detail. Importing and exporting. This is always a big topic because you might already have some of your screenplay in a certain format and you want to make sure you can get them over in another software, in this case Writer's Duet, or you want to output something to another software. Whatever the case, let's have a look at what Writer's Duet can import and export. In order to import, you can go to your tools on your keyboard icon, or you can go to the menu, file, go to the file menu, click file import. Now here you see you can import from your computer, from the Dropbox, from Google Drive and from iCloud. And here you don't see which file types Writer Duet supports. So in order to see that, let's go to the help section. Let's click on the question mark. And let's type in import in the knowledge base, import content. And here you have a list of the file formats that writers do yet can import final draft, PDF, Caltex or Celtex, whatever you want to call it, fountain, text, word, writers do it, of course, and RTF. I think that's a good list because you also have, of course, you have final draft. That's kind of a standard, although the real standard, in my opinion, is PDF. And uh, which is great that you can import PDF because not all applications support that. And also that you have Fountain on the list. That's great because for me, I think Fountain is, a, is an important screenplay format because it's completely application independent. You can save it as a text file. So if you want to archive screenplays of yours, in a format that you can open at any time in the future, um, be sure to save them in Fountain. Okay, so uh, Writers Duet can import that. Text, just text file, comes in handy also. Word and Writers Duet and RTF. Okay, so I think that's, that's, you're absolutely safe with that and you shouldn't have any problems. Let's have a look at export. Let's suppose we want to export this script. Now, Writers Duet has a couple of export options. I show you the nicest one first, the nicest one in my opinion. Let's go to documents, to the documents section. And here down below where you have docs, in case it's hidden, click on this down arrow and then you see multi-doc export. And here you have three panes, so to speak, three sections. You can select which documents you want to export. So let's say just the script, which is called default document in that project. 
and the title page and then let's select for example i don't know fountain and then here you can select in which order you want to have the pages which is great so you can move title page up top of course so in case you have several documents in your project you could decide which ones you want to export and also in which order which is great i think so then you just click export to documents and it's going to make one file out of them i see it has created deep review dot fountain file and um, if we open that we see there is nothing on the title page so that's why it says untitled but you see it has created one document that consists of your title page which was the first document we exported and also your script all right another export possibility is go to file export here or you can also go to the tools and click on export here that's the same thing if you click you get an export dialog um, file name file type and here you have uh, some you see all the file types that you can export uh, you have writer duet with um, temp a template with content pdf final draft final draft without notes fountain keltex doc uh, which is a word rich text format uh, simple text html and also comma separated csv and json in case uh, you need that i think that's that's a great list so everything that you could possibly need should be on that list and also you can choose all lines selected lines visible lines what do you want to export and also here you can see you have two sections you have documents to include and documents to exclude and you can see that your private pad which might be called private pad for a reason, is not included in the export by default. Of course, you could just pull it up here if you wanted to export it. Okay, maybe not. And then you hit export. That's it. Okay, so that's import export. I think there is everything on that list that you could possibly need. I think it's great that it supports PDF import and also handling of fountain as well as import and export. So you're pretty safe. Writing and formatting. If you want to create a new project, you go to this open folder icon, which in this case serves as portfolio icon. And here you have two options. You have open portfolio. You could open another project. In case you haven't seen the introduction, maybe you jump to this section. So I'll, exp I'll explain it real quick. Um, first, I was a little bit confused about the term portfolio because I thought you can have portfolios and projects and uh, documents and I was a little confused which is which. So it's in fact very easy if you click on open portfolio this opens and this is your portfolio you don't have several portfolios you have one portfolio and that portfo portfolio holds all your projects and here you can select another project if you want to create a new project you could click just here or if you open this dialog you go to new project and you can create a new project from there now writers duet is going to open it in a new tab which is nice. I like I like uh, typing things so you have them at your fingertips. It takes a bit because um, it's creating this on the server, I think, I guess. So while that keeps loading, I show you something else. You can, with every project, you can add collaborators. We'll have a look at that later on in more detail, how that works. Um, just so you know, if you go to this section, you can see all the collaborators of this project. Okay, and you could just add them here easily, but we'll go into that. So one project holds several documents, uh, one default document, which is your script, one title page and one private pad. The private pad doesn't export by default. That's why it's called private pad. And uh, you can make more 
than one default document or script document, but that is a pro feature right now. As far as I know, um, I will give you a list of free and pro features uh, later on. So if you're a pro user, you can create several documents here, which is very useful, I think, because sometimes you might want to have either several acts and each act in um, its own document, or you might have one document for research, an extra notepad, or whatever it might be. So I think this approach to have several documents um, in one project uh, works very well. If you want to switch to another template, you see this is a screenplay template now. You have several templates available. And I think most of them are pretty standard. So most of them you see them in, in, in other screenwriting applications also. But there is something I would like to point out. I think it's great that they include audio visual here as well. So this is, let's just, let's just see how it looks. Okay, so this is an extra plugin that you would have uh, to pay extra for, even if you're a pro, pro user. Uh, but what it does is you have two columns and you can put the text or the dialogue on one side and the content and the audio or whatever it might be, the visuals on the other side. So that's used a lot for commercial scripts maybe or other corporate um, videos. And I think it's great that they include a template for this here. In terms of formatting, um, let's go to the keyboard symbol and here you have the line types. The writing is pretty standard. By the way, I think it's really nice that they that they highlight the line you're in with the mouse when you hover. And also you see the cursor line is highlighted. I think that's that's nice. And you can, can change it in the settings, by the way. The writing itself is pretty straightforward. Um, you can jump around between the lines with tab and enter. In case you have used other screenwriting applications, um, you might already be used to that. That's pretty, that's pretty normal. Some dialogue. And Andrew takes me to the next line. Also, because this is um, an online application, I will comment on this, because I have used other online screen screenwriting platforms, so to speak, in the past. And some of them were really laggy. So in terms of you would write something and it would take just a bit until the letter appears on the screen. And that is something that um, I don't like very much. But here you won't have that problem. It's the writing is very smooth. The jumping between the lines works very well. If you have this open while you write, you can very easily select another formatting. So in terms of um, writing, it's really great. It's very smooth and you can just write and not worry about things. What is, in my opinion, what screenwriting applications uh, should be made for. The only thing that I would like to mention is sometimes if you click on another tab, on another document, uh, whatever it might be, uh, you, you see that in the background it takes a bit to load. So that is, of course, because it needs to load that page from the server, I guess. So I don't know how much is cached in the background, but that happens sometimes. But it's, in my experience, it hasn't been more than a couple of seconds. So everything you do inside one document has been very, very smooth and very, very fast and very reliable. So let's look at the formatting just for a second. You have the standard scene, action, character, parentheticals, dialogue, transition, and shot. And then you have also text, which is just normal text that doesn't fit in any other category. And then you have notes. Then you have outline. We will look at that in the outline sections later on. I will give that an extra, an extra chapter, so to speak. And then you have new act and end act. And now here it says something interesting. You see, when you hover the mouse, it says in TV scripts or stage plays and section of document, not in movie scripts. And that made me wonder why not in movie scripts? Because in movie scripts, you also have acts, right? At least possibly. So you might have first act, second act and third act. But when you click on it, it becomes clear why. Because if you click on new act, it will jump to a new page because it wants to 
create a new act here and it let, lets you write act one for example okay so this is not for outlining for you for knowing where you have your act breaks this is really to put it on the put the act breaks on the page so what they mean here is just um not in movie scripts just means in movie scripts you you don't write act one or act two on the page okay so this is for television uh, then you have lyrics if you have that in your screenplay and you also can import images so all in all the writing and the formatting is very straightforward very normal i would say in a positive sense you don't have to worry about it much you can in fact if you just want to write and not need much else you can just jump in log in and start writing and your learning curve is going to be you know, i don't know maybe five seconds you know it's very very straightforward and very nice it behaves well and all is well on the writing front production features we're gonna have a look at revisions first and then um, we'll take a look at some other production features in the menu so for revisions go to the menu to the main menu you see if you go into the menu it's always stuck in the menu that you used the last time so if you need another one you have to click out of it revisions so okay here you have the revisions menu one thing about the revisions menu maybe that's just me and it's just a little detail but i needed to wrap my head around it a little because if you look at the menu at the order of the menu you have accept and reject as the first menu entry and as a second menu entry you have view and track so if you want to create a revision for the first time like we are right now you need to go to view and track so that's the first function you need so i don't understand why they didn't put it up top why not put the first thing you need in the first row and the second thing you need in the second row but well okay um not a biggie no problem uh click on view and track and then this dialog opens and you can select new revision you can select who is who is um, making the revision and if you choose writers it will put in the name that's okay and so now it gets a little bit confusing if you see it the first time because here you have two colors and i have no idea what they mean i mean i suppose one of them is going to be the text and as i found out later the other one is going to be the page color so you can choose text color and page color but you have no way of knowing that here okay so this first one is text color just in order to show you i will choose um let's keep it blue that's okay and let's choose another color for the page let's just say red doesn't matter right now it's just uh for the purposes of demonstration and you could add everyone to this revision if you want and you click create okay and then you get here um a list if you make more revisions you get a list of all the revisions underneath one another and here you can say what you want to do do you want to track it view it ignore it and also here you see that this color is the text color and this color is the page color. They should have just written it somewhere here so you know what it means. Um, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's say done. And now if you change something, camel race is passed two times. Now it shows up in blue. You see that this is the revised text. You have an asterisk here on the right side and also a red bar shows up on the page so you see this is a revised page and those are the colors that we gave that page and also on the right side you see um, a revision window and you can mark or unmark manually 
those lines and that you that you changed or you can mark a line that you didn't change in case you want to do that okay now just for the purposes of demonstration let's make another revision um, i click on view and track again Na new revision let's say writers it's fine let's give it another color let's say text color is a dark green and uh, the page color is um this this purple okay let's click done now i'm going to make another change let's add a few characters here okay so we have another change here now if you click on re review revision you go to accept reject if you want to now you can choose which revision you want to review and let's say we want to review both you can now go through the changes and click accept or reject and accept or accept all and so on and so forth you could also review revisions by date or by writers just click date and writers and you can choose the writer's name or you can choose the date range in which the revisions occur. Okay, that's revisions. Let's take a look at other production features. Go to the menu, click on production. And here you have scene numbers. You might need that, maybe. Maybe you want. Some, some writers like to put scene numbers in, although they're not in production. So if you, that's nice. If you click on, you saw the change settings here. It was an arrow that pointed you to the right direction because if you click on um, some settings, um, this whole dialog opens and you have a lot of different settings and adjustments that you can make here. And it's a bit, I don't want to say overwhelming. It's just a lot of different stuff that you can change. And I don't think there is any better way of of um, showing it because it's just a bunch of stuff that you need in some place right i mean there has to be a settings box where you can where you can change all that so and it's a bit it's a, if you open it it's a bit hard to see where you want to look first because it's so many buttons and and um and menus and th things to change so it's nice that when you open it up it shows you the place where you uh, change the thing that you click on. So if you go to numbering, that's in page numbering, you have show page numbers. Okay, so you have also numbering for whatever you want to number. And if you open that list, you can put numbers for basically every element that you have. So I want to number a scene. Oh, let's say all the scenes. So you just choose scene and click on numbers. And then you have a bunch of more options, show numbers on left and right and whatever. Okay, so you might want to look into that just for the sake of showing you really quick. Now you have scene numbers, okay? One thing about numbers, if you click on scene numbers again, and now let's say I want, for some reason, I want to number my characters. So we go to character and I numbered them. Okay, now the characters have numbers. Let's see how that looks. So you have now you have a bunch of numbers. You have scene numbers, you have character numbers, and you might get confused. And maybe you have some other numbers. Who knows? Okay. So if you go to scene numbers and you click on that list, you don't see instantly which of those elements have numbers. So if you have more than one or two, it will be really confusing. So it would be nice to see maybe with an asterisk or something just to see here in the menu which of those elements have a numbering going on because otherwise you have to go back in your script and look okay where is the numbers okay that's character element so you have you have to choose the elements manually which in most cases might not be a big thing because you will remember what you numbered and it would just would be a nice little thing to add here but what I, what I really like is that you can choose any element you, you want and give it a number, not, not just scenes. That's nice. And if you want to take the numbers away, just choose the element 
again and click numbers away and then they're gone. Now the element, uh, the character numbers are gone. The scene numbers are still there. We haven't activated them yet. Let's do that. Go to scene, disable numbers. So there we are. Okay, so all of these settings or most of all of them, uh, they bring you to the same dialogue. If you click headers and footers, you get the same dialogue. Uh, that's page where we were before. You see numbering is down below. Now we're at headers and footers. You have that here. And I looked through the settings real quick. It doesn't, at first glance, I didn't find anything that I was missing. So there seems to be everything you need and maybe here and there a little bit more. You also have, you can uh, change the line spacing and things like that to cheat a little if you need a little more lines on your page and you have more than continues you know all this general stuff that you need and that you expect from a professional screenwriting application it it's all in there then let me lose a word about watermarks click on watermarks um this is when you want to put a big watermark on your script so that you know uh, who you gave it to and it's pretty simple you can just put in whatever you want to put as a watermark now it says draft one and then you can choose the color and the font and you can choose one or two or three and what that does is it puts this what you put in this box draft one in this case once or or twice or three times on the page okay what you cannot do what other screenwriting applications can do some of them at least is that you can have a distribution list. So you would uh, put a whole list of names in some kind of box, and then it would output maybe, let's say, for example, 20 names, and it would output 20 PDFs and each one with a different name. So I didn't find a possibility to do this here, just so you know. I don't think it's really necessary if you don't do that a lot. But just so you know, okay, you can put in one name um, and that's it. And then you click download PDF and it will create a PDF with the watermark. Outlining. Let's talk a little bit about outlining. Writer Duet has an outlining feature, if you want to call it that, or let's say rather outlining formatting. If you go to the line type section a little bit, further down you see there is an outline line type so let's see what it does but let's do that on a new document and I'll show you why in a second let's create a new document here new document I want to see it as a page this is going to be my outline and I want an empty page okay if you create a new document you have other options of choosing but I want to create an empty page. Takes a couple of seconds to create a new page in this project. Okay, this took a while. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be the fault of Writers Duet because I have a pretty old laptop and I also heard the fan going up. So maybe it's just um, doing something in the background. And that's why it's a bit, little bit slow, or it might be the internet connection, uh, which I don't think, but who knows, doesn't matter. Let's have a look at outlining. So there are different ways to outline, and I won't go into that in detail because everybody does it a little bit differently. And um, I'm sure you have your own system. Uh, let me just share with you my experience with outlining or trying to outline in Writers to Add, okay? So, if you create a new document, you're automatically in a scene heading line. If you go to line types, you see that scene is selected, okay? Now, I don't wanna create a scene, I want to create an outline. So, I click on outline. And let's say this is Act one, just for the sake of simplicity. Then I want to make another one, act two and act three. Okay, now I have three outline lines. Let's create a little bit of space in between so we can differentiate them. 
Okay, and now I can basically do with them whatever I want. Those are outline lines and I can filter. Okay, um, if you have those in your script, you can, and you just want to see your outline, you can go to all line types and filter and disactivate everything you need and activate everything you need. So you just can focus on whatever you want to focus on. But um, as we saw earlier, there is also a cards feature. So I want to use that in order to outline. So let's go to cards. You can click on cards and private pad. Or you can go here where it says page, you can go to cards view. Now, there is nothing to see. It takes a bit to load, so now I see it loaded up the private pad, but I still don't see anything with cards. And here is why. Let's add a new card and see what Write It With does. You can see I created two cards because I clicked on Add Card two times. And those are empty now. So let's see how that looks in terms of formatting on our page. Now, if you see what happens when I hover over here, so up here we have three outline lines with lines in between that we created earlier. And now since we have two cards here, we also have, and that's what the writer to add created, two slug lines, two scene headings. If I click in there and I go to the line types, I see this is a scene. And the one below also is a scene. So that means if we go back to cards, you cannot create cards with outline lines. Cards are only created in connection to scenes. So you get a card for every scene heading. And you don't have anything in, let's say in the line type hierarchy, that is higher up than scene headings. So you cannot, for example, do what I intended to do here. Say I have act one, act two and act three. And inside of those structure points, so to speak, I have different kinds of scenes. And herein lies the problem. So those outline lines only work inside of scenes. So depending on the way you outline, this might be useful for you or maybe not. And to be honest, the way I outline, for me, it's not useful at all. So I wish to have something here that gives me the freedom to have outline points independently of scenes or at least higher up in the hierarchy. Because for me, for my thinking, the outline step in terms of function in the story comes first and then I have scenes that express it. Now having said that, it might also be the other way around in some circumstances. If you, So you might have one scene that covers several outline steps. Okay, because you have twists and turns and you have a reveal here and um, a mystery there and so on and so forth. Okay, so the problem with that is if you have outline steps that are bound to your scene structure, you are kind of handcuffed, in my opinion. So this way of outlining doesn't really work for me. Um, I would have expected that you can at least create a new card with each outline line. But that doesn't work for that. You would have to make a workaround. So you would have to create a new scene line so that you have a card and inside of that card, you can put your outline lines. And that's just, you know, that's not that for me, that's not really intuitive and, and, and doesn't really work. So let's suppose you're okay with that. And um, you want to use, you want to outline just with scene cards and that's fine for you. No problem. Let's just have a quick look at how that works. So here we have the document I used earlier with, let's just have a look, with some sample text. Okay, so we have a couple of scenes here with just some sample text. And this is the same, just 
viewed as seen cards. As you can see, one of the cards is green because I gave it a tag. If you right click on the card, you can open a tagger and you can give it tags. And you see, I've prepared act one, act two, act three, and this was a test tag. I can delete that, delete this one. Uh, yes. And you can also have, because you see no green here, you can also have child tags. If you swivel that open, you see act one child. And you can activate and deactivate that. What I don't know is why it shows me the check with the mother tag, with the orange act one and not with the act one child. But okay, you see the color and now I, it's act one child child, yeah, one level below. So you can use the scene cards if you want and give them colors, which is nice if you want to distinguish them a little bit better. And you also can, you can uh, swap them around here. In order to do that, you need to click on them and stay on them a little bit. And then you see, you can take it and put it somewhere else. And if you let go, it will change the order of your scenes around, which is nice. It's kind of standard right now, um, but it's good to have that. So if you want to switch scenes, that's a very simple way to do that. Let's take a look also at the mind map. Here you have the possibility to just play with your cards and order them any way you like. And this doesn't change the order of your scenes. So this is completely independent of your scene order. And this is the big difference between index cards and mind map. Index cards are bound to the order of your scenes. Mind map isn't. So mind map is a big playground where you can just play with all your scene cards and also you can connect them to one each other. So if you take one card, hold it and pull it on top of another card, you can create connections and you can also remove the connection the same way. You just pull the card on top of the other card again. I think this is a nice way to structure your ideas. The only thing, again, I said it before, the only thing that I miss here is that you can have cards that are independent of scenes. So I think this is a restriction that I personally don't like, but it depends on the way you work. Maybe it's fine for you. Then please go ahead and uh, use it. Collaboration. Okay, so Writer's Duet, as the name implies, is about is mostly about writing with a writing partner or with other collaborators. So that's the strong suit. So let's see how that goes. I have changed my account now on the browser to a free account. The thing with collaboration is it's a pro feature, but you can be invited and collaborate if you have a free account. You only need a pro account in order to invite others. So if you're writing in a group, at least one of you needs a pro account and that person can invite all the others. Okay. So now I see this project, this deep review project. And I also see last modified four minutes ago. And you see there are two collaborators here. This is I'm on this account now and this one is the other account and you can see the other account is admin because the pro account which is running in the application version of writers duet in the background right now is um, the administrator so let's open this and you also can see up top now here it says upgrade to pro so you see right now we're on a free account You can see everything that we did on the project on the other account. So now let's just change something. And this is an action line. And let's just add and this also. And now we will switch to the pro account to the other account. And you see it's already there. So it really just takes a few seconds. And you see in the notifications, that's when I joined the project. 
Um, so this works really well. And we can add something else. I don't think so. Now this is green because we're on a revision now. Let's go to the other. And you see that in the in the browser as well. So if you wanna if you wanna work together, that's really great. And let me show you some other thing. Um, now in the free account, I'm going to put the cursor in the in this line. And now you see that line is highlighted and that line is highlighted. That's because one user is in that line and I'm in that line in this line. That means you can also see what the other one is working on right now. If you want to invite another user, you have to send them an email. You send them an invite by email and the other user has to accept that invite first. Otherwise, they cannot participate in the project. So if you get the email, you have to click a link in the email and then you can collaborate on the project. Okay, I think there is not a lot more to say. Um, collaboration, everything I tried out with revisions and, and with two versions, uh, two users at the same time, it worked really well and it's fast and you can also hide the changes up to a certain point if you want to play a little and you don't want the other person to see everything immediately. Um, you can do it in private and so the other person will see it with, will see later. Um, and that's really great. So if you are looking for a solution with a writing partner or a writing team or some uh, some producer to co collaborate with, uh, whatever it might be. So this is Writers Duet Strong Suit and this works really, really well. You can see that they put in a lot of effort in order to get this right and and they did. Notes and annotations. Um, I think notes and annotations in Writer's Duet are very simple and easy to use. You have next to every line on the left side, you see the speech bubble. And when you click on it, a note window opens and you can just type your note in here. Comment. Okay. And then when you go to the comment section, that's this speech bubble here in the in the menu. You'll see the comment listed here. And here you can resolve it, remove it, or reply. And that's nice. So you can add a reply to someone else's comment. You have basically some kind of a messenger window here. And that's really great when you're working with someone else, which is, as I mentioned before, the strength, the real strength of Rider Duet. And I think they implemented it really nicely. Because often in other screenwriting applications, you have to look for the notes function a little bit, and then you have to mark some text and click on add note or something like that. And here it is real simple. And also this speech bubble is there for you in all the different views that you have. If you go to the card view, that's the same document, just in card view, you also have it right here. Or, or if you go to the mind map view, you also have it right here on the left side. That's really nice, great. I love how they did it. Also, if you go to this down arrow here at the top of the comments section, you have additional functionality. You can sort the comments by date ascending or descending or line ascending or descending. And you can also select users. Now I have two different users with the same name but you can select that you only want to see comments from certain users. And you also can check if you want to see resolved or removed comments, or if you want to see comments from deleted lines. So in case you deleted a comment or resolved a comment and you want to get it back, no problem. Just go to these options here and select show resolved or removed comments and they will be back and you can unremove them or unresolve them, which is great. In addition, you can also use the note line item. If you go to the line items, 
line type, sorry, line types, you have a node line type. And now you see that this action line, another action line has changed to a node line type. So you could add nodes inside of your script if you want to have it there really as a, as a real line in your script document. And you can also, if you go up top to filter, you can include or exclude certain lines. So if you want to have them in your script, but you don't want to see them, just deactivate note. And you see that this line now is gone because it's set to note and set to unvisible. Backups. Let's talk a little bit about backups. Since Writer Duet is an online writing system, depending on how much you trust online writing systems, server systems, you don't really have to worry about backups. But of course, you can make additional backups if you want. Let me just show you, show you something first. Writer Duet gives you a time machine. If you click on time machine on the left, you see that the project you work on is saved in certain intervals anyway. So you can go back to any of those steps you did before in the project and, the, and you have a, a snapshot at that time. So if you click on the menu, you can give this snapshot a name, copy it, open it in the, another pane or delete it if you want. Okay, so this is a backup system that you have in place anyway. Because if you work in the browser, it's not, the project is not stored online. Uh, the project is not stored on your hard disk. It's stored online on the Rider Duet servers. Okay. But if you want to make additional backups, if you want to create a manual backup, you can of course just go to export as, um, pick the file type you like, and then make a copy. So you can have an offline copy in any place you like, in any format you like. Um, if you want to have regular copies, regular backups, uh, there are other possibilities. This here is checked by default, save in-app backups for non-shared computers. Um, so Writer Duet is making background, background backups anyway. Okay, so that's an additional backup step. Um, you can also activate autosave if you want. And you see those locally saved backups. If you go to the menu in Docs, locally saved backups. Additionally, if you go to the backup settings, in the menu, go to customize and then backups. And here you have additional options. You see it's a, it's a pro feature, but you can make hard drive backups in Fountain, Final Draft or Caltex and also make automatic backups to Dropbox or a Google Drive. So you would have an additional backup offline on your hard drive if you want and also another additional backup on an online server system that is different, I suppose, <laughs> from Writer's, Writer Duet. So there are many, many ways to backup your, your project, your work. So I think you're pretty safe there. Differences between the free and the pro version. Now there are different subscription models that Rider Duet offers. Uh, Pro is just one of them. Let's have a look what the differences are. I will go directly to the help and then click on answers. And we're looking for Pro. And here it says, choose the best subscription for you. Let's have a look. So the free subscription, you can write online from any browser, you can have up to three projects at a time in your portfolio. So you can ha only have three projects active. Uh, you have industry standard formatting, of course. Uh, you can import from 
other formats. You have unlimited exporting, you have time machine snapshots and the timeline. You have outlining with cards and mind map, you have tagging and filtering, you have revision tracking, scene numbering and basic formatting. And you can join any scripts that are shared by a paid subscriber. So the plus subscription, you see at this point it's $7.99 per month or $59 per year. You have everything from the free subscription, of course, and additionally, you get unlimited projects, unlimited documents inside a project. If you're on the free plan, you only have the title page, one screenplay document and your private pad. If you're on the subscription model, you have unlimited documents within a project. You have real-time collaboration by sharing with free or paid users. So you can set up the sharing. You, you're not dependent of someone else who has a subscription. You have chat and notifications. You have Google Drive and Dropbox backups, automatic and manual. You can save your work outside of Writer Duet. If you're free, you basically can only work inside of Writer Duet and you can export it, of course. Uh, you have the graveyard feature. You have check document formatting and for present progressive tense. You have the possibility to accept and reject revisions. You can export drafts from, from any point in history. With a pro subscription, it's it costs a bit more. It's $11.99 per month, $89 per year. And you have everything from the free and plus subscription. And also you can download the desktop app with free updates. You have script statistics and gender analysis. You have pin dropping, typewriter mode, production tools, reports and analytics, script shortening, fully customizable formatting, more document templates and custom templates, and show deleted text and revisions. And then you have the premium subscription and that one is $15.99 per month or 119 per year. And you have everything from the free plus and pro subscription. And you also have auto translate, multi-column and read through. And those are plugins that you need to pay extra when you are on another subscription model. You can use them, but you have to pay them extra. So if you have the premium subscription, um, those are included as well. Mobile experience. What I really love about the mobile version of Riders Duet is it's basically exactly the same of what you see in the browser. Because it is in a browser, it's fairly easy to adapt all the windows and menu bars to the smaller screen because you have less screen real estate, of course. And also, if you take a look at the hamburger menu, now it makes perfect sense why they did it this way. It's really easy to use on the phone. So most of it is a great experience and you can basically write just as if you were writing on your computer. But there is a big but. Some windows that open are not adjusted to the smaller screen. Most of them are, some of them are not. For example, if you go to the revisions window where you can set up the revision, you see that the window doesn't fit the screen. The window is just not adapted to the size of the screen. It rounds off the sides. So you have no way of accessing certain areas of the window. If you turn the phone to the other side in landscape mode, it's a little bit better, but still the left side is cut off and that's not really a solution. So there are some areas where they should make sure it works on the phone as well. Let's open up the settings window to see if this works. You see, in this case, they did adapt it to the phone. It works great. You can scroll the top to make sure you can access all of the areas. So again, they should just go through all the windows and make sure 
they adapt all the windows to the smaller screen. Writing offline. Since Rider Duet is a cloud-based or let's say online-based writing application, you may ask yourself, what if I don't have an internet connection? I want to write on the train, on the plane, wherever it might be in another country. Um, can I do that? The answer is yes, but it depends. Um, you can download the Writer Duet application with the Pro subscription. And with that, you can write offline as well. So what happens is, if it's basically the same, the only major difference is that you have the menu up top, like in any other application. You then don't have to use the hamburger menu as in the browser, although you can. Now, what happens is when you write, the changes will be saved in the application storage and they will be synced to the Writer Duet servers with your project. So the next time when you open it, with an internet connection, those changes will be synced. There is one caution though, never do this. Let me show you. I'm going to log out. And now I'm going to pretend I lost my internet connection. I will turn my Wi-Fi off. So now you see what happens. Nothing. It's, un it's become unusable because if you're logged off, you need to log in first in order to use the app. There is no, there is no version of using just the online, the, the offline stored projects that you have right now in your application storage. Okay. That doesn't work. You need to be logged on. So in order to do that, just make sure it's not a big thing, but uh, just make sure you don't forget it. Okay. You need to make sure that when you quit the writers to that application, that you are still logged in so that when you are offline, you can use the application. It will continue to work without internet connection. That's okay. Just don't log out. Also, if you have changes in the browser version and in the application version, you need to sync both of them with the servers. You see in the time machine icon, if this check mark is green, you need to sync both versions in order that, that to have the newest, the newest version of your script. Okay. I think this writing offline is implemented well. Um, it works very well. I, I tried it out. As long as you don't log off, uh, you're pretty fine. I think this going back and forth between browser and application and choosing which one you want to use, uh, it's really nice. It, it, it has you have the best of both worlds, actually. If you prefer writing in an online cloud-based system, you can do that. If you want to have the offline writing experience, like with a real, so to speak, offline app, you can have that as well. You just need to remember that you need to sync it every now and then. And that's it. You're fine. I think that works really well. Customizations. Let me show you a couple of things that I think are very nice in the customization menu. I'm not going through all of those because they are it's quite a lot and not all of them are important. Um, in editing, what I find very nice, uh, maybe you like it, it's you have a typewriter mode that lets you type in the middle of the page. And so the cursor will always stay mid page and the page will scroll depending on where you're going with the cursor. I think it's nice they included that. You can also change the, the setting for line highlighting. So by default, it's activated. I think it's nice to see in which line you are with the cursor. And you can also check or uncheck if you want to see where the other writer is in the script. 
Then you have quite some notification settings, since Writer Duet is a application that is, I wouldn't say mainly, but it is designed with writing groups or writing partners in mind, so you will have to communicate a lot. So here you have a whole bunch of settings how you want um, notifications set up, so that you always know what's happening but you're not inundated with information that you really don't want. And by the way, notification flying, that means you can enable notifications that appear at the top left of the display in the app. Some other stuff that doesn't really fit into the other categories. You have a dictation feature. And if you go to Tools, Plugins, you see the plugins that are included with the premium subscription. So let's just see if you want to use that, you would have to unlock it and pay for it. Okay, so if you went through the section where I explained the differences between the several description uh, subscription models, we already talked about those. Then you have in Tools, you have Line Alternates. That means you can have several versions of a line. It's very useful for dialogue. If you want to put in several versions of what a character might say and not delete the other versions and to see which one works best, you have a writing schedule. So you could schedule the hours when you, when you want to write. You can check your script for present progressives in order to avoid them or to be conscious about them. You can shorten the document. So Writer Duet is going to look for opportunities where you can save a little page space. You can check the formatting and you have a word count. You also have a bunch of reports If you go to if you go to reports and you see here is a whole bunch of different reports that you can let writers do it create or you click on custom and that's a pro feature so let me show that show you that in the app if you go to reports custom you can choose which elements you want to have included in the report which is quite nice also what you have is if you go to the docs menu you have a ghost mode this is nice um, because when you're collaborating with someone else uh, they usually see what you're doing in the script so if you want to have a little privacy so to speak and just hide what you're doing and um, maybe you want to try out a couple of things for your on your own before you show them to somebody else then you can activate ghost mode so the other persons will not see what you're doing until you deactivate ghost mode of course they could also have their ghost mode activated so you you will just have to talk about that and but i'm sure it's not a problem because writer duet has a lot of interaction features um, that will make that pretty successful. All right, conclusion. Um, what do I think about Writer's Duet? First of all, let me say, of course, it depends a lot on your taste, but I will give you my pros and my cons and you will make up your own mind about it. On the pro side, using Writer Duet, you see that a lot of thought went into developing it and making sure writers have the right tools and they they work well and most of it uh, almost all of it works really well you have a high level of security if you trust server-based writing systems that is and you have to decide that for yourself but i think it's obvious from what you see from the backup possibilities that you have that they really addressed one big problem many writers have if they lose stuff they've written 
that's just terrible and I would say that the chances or the risk that that, that, that happens to you with Rider Duet are very very small you really would have to I, I, I don't know how you would do it you would have to deliberately delete all your history or something like that you would have to deliberately delete something in order to lose something other than that there is no possibility that i can imagine that you will have a problem on uh, that front also it has a lot of options it's a very powerful application on the writing front i didn't find anything that i was missing i talked a little bit about outlining and that stuff but that i will say that in the in the, in the con section on the pro section i think it it delivers absolutely the collaboration feature is really strong and really simple and really powerful so my impression was the whole software is constructed around the collaboration so that's the main thing that i would say stands out what i also like is the multi-doc export feature so you can have several documents and decide which ones you want to export and in which format and in which order that's really nice and in general it's very simple to use uh, the application in itself it has a lot of options and if you want to use to know about everything it will take you a little bit of time because there are just many ways you can adjust it but if you just want to go in and write and not uh, worry about the software really much, then it's it's a brilliant choice. Okay, the con side. I have to say again, this is my opinion, yours might be different. I'm not a big fan of monthly priced software packages because you have to pay for it all the time and over years and years and years, if you're using it a lot, this will add up. And that is something that I don't like very much. Now, having said that, I think that the free version lets you do quite a lot. You can have three projects and you can write in the browser. So if you want to just test the software, you can basically test it forever. Yes, the free version is lacking some tools. You, you cannot invite others to collaborate. And um, there are some things you cannot do. You cannot write offline, for example. But really, I mean, all the rest that the free version offers is really a lot. So you could write basically for years and years in Writer's Duet and never pay a penny. Also, I'm not a big fan of online writing, although um, it has become so good now that it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Maybe it's just... A mindset thing you know that you you know you're writing on a server and you cannot you, you don't have that much control over where you store your files and which versions and that kind of thing okay so it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just that i prefer maybe because i'm used to it i prefer to have an offline writing app that is installed on my computer i take care of my backups and that's it and i don't have to worry about oh i need to make sure i don't log out so i can write later on on the train and maybe because i'm used to it i forgot so and then i can't log in because i don't have internet connection and blah blah blah, blah. okay so i don't even want to think about that one more thing most of the software almost all of it works really great but then every now and then you run into some problems and it's a little bit confusing. Um, there, there were a few things in the interface I pointed out. Um, I think it's pretty clean. It could be a little bit cleaner if you open it up the first time. I would get rid of some elements so that you have a little bit of a cleaner impression the first time. Um, but that's just me. So there are some areas that they should rework a little bit. For example, the window with the revision colors, you don't know what the colors are. My impression is they focused 100%, or maybe not 100%, but most of it on collaboration. And I would bet that this is the most complicated thing to, to implement. So they focused on it 
and that's really great. So maybe there are some places where they didn't spend so much time and, and energy on to, to make sure they are really up to par. Let's just say it like that. So it's a little bit of a mixture of most of it works great and some things don't feel quite ready and they should just go over it again. Also in terms of intuitiveness, some things are super logical, writing is really simple, but some things are not quite intuitive. Where things are located, where functions are located doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But then again, they give you tools to, so you can uh, the possibility so you can rearrange the tools so you could get rid of that but then again why not make it right the, f the first in the first place so that you don't have to rearrange it so it's it's the little things also uh on the con side i think the way i would like to outline the outline feature is not usable at all for me so if i would decide to and i'm not saying i I do or I don't, it's just theoretically speaking. If I would decide to use Writers to Add for whatever reason, it would be absolutely clear to me that for outlining, I have to use another application. So Writers to Add would be for writing and for outlining, I would need something else. All right, that's it. I hope I could give you a good overview of Writers to Add, maybe. You were on the fence uh, if you should give it a try. Uh, maybe you just wanted to know a couple of things that you didn't know so far. Maybe you want to buy it. Maybe you don't know which subscription model to use, whatever the case. I couldn't go through it all, of course, because it would have been a lot more and the video is already quite long. Um, so thank you very much for watching. If you're missing something, if I'm uh, let me know if I'm wrong on something that might also happen. So please let me know if I said something wrong, then I will be happy to correct that in a later video. Apart from that, I hope the information was useful for you and the time was well spent. And I hope to see you next time. Happy writing. <laughs>